and now today for another video and this time something slightly different. So this morning I woke up, it's first day of the Christmas holiday and I noticed that the new vectorizer had been merged in Open Orienteering Mapper. So I decided to try out the new vectorizer and because I tried it out I thought I'd make a quick video of showing how to use vectorizer because it is quite simple. The main idea for the vectorizer is to um, take a scan of an old map and create vectors for any linear features in the map. Um, so for this example, I've taken one of the um, scanned maps that someone posted on, on the issue, which we're going to load in as a template into Open Interior Mapper. And the goal is we're going to try and create a, a layer which has all the contour information on automatically. So if we were to manually trace all these contours, it would take, take quite a long time um, because they're quite a complicated shape. And there's quite a lot of them. Um, using the vectorizer, it can be done quite straightforward manner. Okay, so the first thing to do um, in order to use vectorizer is to select the uh, the layer which contains the raster layer which contains the the information you want to vectorize, and then click on edit and the new vectorize lines feature. Okay, so this opens this new this new dialog which we'll use in order to vectorize the image. Okay, so the first panel contains just just the raster image. Um, in this panel, you can apply some filters which will um, have the effect of blurring the image, which sometimes when you scan an image, then the colors get a bit messed up because um, just of scan the artifacts from scanning. So you can use some filters in order to try and smooth any, any um, dodgy colors that you have after scanning. But this image is fine, so we don't need to apply any filters there. Right, so then onto the second pane, which is colors. So this the map has um, different colors on and how the vectorizer works it tries to isolate individual colors and then you select the color which you want to want to vectorize so um if you just have a map which just has two colors on them you could classify it into two different colors but we have maybe 10 different colors so this is just a guess to start with and once you click on the now button um it guesses it the vectorizer guesses what 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 are the like, main colors of the image? So, if I click the blue button, that highlights all the parts of the map which it, which the vectorizer thinks thinks is thinks is blue, um, and you can select multiple colors. So I could select these blues as well if I if I actually cared about all these different different shades. And then the clear button, not not, not the clear button. Then you unclick it and you can deselect them by clicking on them again. However. We are trying to get the contour details. So we want to select these browns. Okay, so that looks pretty good already. So that, all the contour information is basically already highlighted in red. You can also choose to add this brown as well, which looks slightly like slightly more information um, and doesn't it doesn't highlight too much of these these open areas, but it might it's probably unnecessary. It's like this this brown and that highlights all the open areas, it's too much stuff, we don't care about that. Um, same for this one. So, selecting just this one color this time probably probably works best. Um, if we've chosen too many colors, then not all the contours have been selected just by selecting one color. So, if we'd selected, let's say, twenty colors, it tries to find twenty different colors within the image. Then the contour brown will be too fine grained. So, if we zoom in here, you see that not not all the contour is actually selected. You'd have to select multiple of these colours to make it more and more more and more well defined until it selects selects them all. But if you select approximately the right number, 10, maybe let's try nine, um, then you just have to click on one of the colours in order to select all the information. Okay. So that's selected all of the contours in the image, which we're now going to try and convert into contours in the map. Right, so then once we've classified the image into the parts we want, that next tab is the thinning tab. So thinning creates a black and white image firstly of the um, stuff that we've selected in the previous previous pane. So we can you can clearly see here that it does select all the contour information. It also selects some of that marsh from the previous previous pane over here. That's not too big a deal because we can just delete that later. Um, does some of our artifacts as well, but but not to worry. Okay, so in this, in this pane, there are several options. Um, you can erode the the image. Erosion means 
um, each 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 set each uh, each contour will be um, made smaller. Dilation is the opposite. Each contour will be made, made bigger. Dilation is useful for closing small gaps in contours, and erosion can do, uh, then undoes the process. So if we dilate and then erode, then it has the effect of generalizing the image. But we don't need to do that in this case because everything is everything is pretty good. Something that you do need to do though is you always need to thin the lines. So how the vectorization process works is it only joins up, it only creates a vector if the feature is exactly one pixel wide. And thinning lines has the effect of taking a wider band and making it into a single pixel. So now if we zoom in you can see that each of these contours is only one pixel. So the, the contour tracing will hopefully do quite, quite a good job. Okay, so now we have isolated all the contours and done a bit of processing. Next step is to actually create vectors. So we click the Create Vectors button. It does not take very long. And now the cyan lines are the vectors. The red lines, the red dots are the control points of the vectors. And you can see it's done a pretty good job. Like it's picked out all the all the contours basically. It's not bothered with these these artifacts here from the open areas. So it looks like we've done a pretty good job of isolating all the contours. Okay. Um, so once once we've created the vectors, we now need to translate this information back into our map. And so we do that is click save vectors. So at the moment that doesn't close this dialogue, but then we can close the dialogue and the paths will now be on, on this map. So if I um, temporarily hide the template, then you can see all the paths which were created by the vectorization. Okay, so normally what we want to do first is convert all those paths into a specific symbol. So I'll convert all those into contours. Um, and now you can see that the tracing process has done a reasonable job. There are still some issues that like you can see here. It hasn't quite um, picked up all these all this detail, but it's done a good job for unbroken contours and the, the less complicated parts so like over here. It's done a great job. Um, something else I'm going to do is convert all of these all of these paths into curves. So you can do that by going to convert to curves. Okay. No. Nope. Okay. So now these are all have all been converted into curves. Um, they're busy curves with these control points now, so you can more easily manipulate them like normal. And we also probably want to delete all these contours from the map because they're not actually contours, are they? So we can highlight those, do some more cleaning up, delete, 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 delete. Um, and you want to do some more cleaning up usually as well. So we have to, like, for example, join join together these two points. So I've joined these two together now, so I can join them together by pressing the uh, C button. So now that's one, that's just one object. Okay, so I'm probably delete that control point. Um, likewise here, if I join this up together, press C, set them both, press C, and then we just have a single single contour. Um, some places you're going to put, need to split the contour as well, like over here there's a mistake because um, there should be two distinct contours but the vectorization has got um, slightly confused by this white blob I, I imagine. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to split this contour, so um, the way to split is use create an initial point there. So now that I've split off these two contours, we can join this into here, delete these points like so, join these two together, and then we'll join these two together as well. Okay, oh, let me join that up. And then you get something which is more approaching the original image. So you still have to do all this all this cleanup work, um, but it hopefully is less less work than having to trace all these complicated shapes. Um, you, know, you still have to delete, like work delete these nulls and um, reinterpret some some of the features traced with form lines rather than contour features. So you have to join all those up and turn into contours. But perhaps it's perhaps it's less work and. Um, in my experience, well, from trying a few examples, uh, it does work reasonably well. 
Okay, so what are the limitations at the moment? Well, the main limitation is that it only works for tracing uh, linear features. Um, so it works really well for tracing contours, um, which is what it's designed to do. But more, more complicated linear features does not work as well, in my experience, because they're not single continuous lines. Like if earth banks, for example, don't, don't really work very well because they have gaps, gaps in them. And there's just no support at all for um, tracing area features at the moment. So, so you're on your own there. And if you're trying to vectorize some urban, urban data or an urban map, then you probably are going to be vectorizing area features. There's a usually a lot of area features when you're creating an urban map, like pavements, open areas, um, forbidden areas, and so on, buildings, etc., etc. But if you've, got, if you've got a forest map from 1983, then which is solely white with lots of com, com, contours on, then it's going to work great. Um, so, so there. This is fresh, brand new, fresh stuff in open, you know, open orientation wrapper. So hopefully it improves in the next few releases. But I just wanted to get this video out to show how easy it can be to vectorize some some things in your map.